uh, and did want to start right there, the implications of the China crackdown. What do you think it's doing to the whole market? Yeah, it's such an interesting time, Amanda. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me on. In the short term, I mean, what we're seeing is that miners like ourselves, Argo and other miners, you know, outside of China are going to get more, are going to take on more of the Bitcoin verification, you know, jobs. And that essentially means that you're going to see margins improve. You're going to see more Bitcoin, you know, as much as 30 percent Bitcoin, uh, more Bitcoin flowing to, to existing miners. But I think in the long term, what's really interesting is that with the hash rate moving out of China, with, with Chinese basically having to move their machines, being forced to shut down and move to different parts of the world, it's really a redistribution of the, the, you know, of the hash rate, of the world's hash rate to other jurisdictions. You're, you're going to see it go to Kazakhstan. You're going to see it go to Russia. But most importantly, and I think the majority of, majority of it is going to end up in North America. And that's going to mean that North America is going to be a much more significant player in, in the global Bitcoin mining and cryptocurrency mining uh, system, ecosystem than we've seen before. Hmm. One of the big factors, and I know this has affected Argo uh, for a lot of miners, has been access to equipment and the chip shortage. Uh, how is that influencing your business right now? And where do you see it? Do you see it resolving anytime soon? Yeah, so I mean, speaking of access to miners, what happens when you know half of the network comes offline and those machines need to go somewhere? So those a lot of those Chinese miners are not just looking to move, but they're looking to sell some of those machines. So it's meant that prices for miners have come down mm -hmm. as much as 50 percent over the last month or so. And it's meant that a lot of the orders that they put in in the future where there was this arms race, where it was really hard to get machines, it, they now need somewhere to put those machines. So it's it's really significant for, you know, I, I think where we were talking about two, two months ago, three months ago, we were talking about the chip shortage and the arms race has so expensive, so hard to get miners. What we're talking about now is where are you going to put them? Where's the power going? Where's the power coming from? Who can host those machines? So it's really been a sea change in terms of, you know, the overall kind of ecosystem and, and where, you know, how miners are now. Not, they're no longer focused on machines. They're now focused on where to put those machines. So how much um, mining do you think is going to be going green, Peter, in the next, say, five years? For me, five years is uh, uh, a relatively short period of time, but we just spoke to yeah. a startup founder who, who, who thought five years was like 100 years from now. Nonetheless, um, it takes time to move these machines. <laughs> it takes time to find new power sources. Yeah. So uh, what, do we, what do we look like in terms of 2026 blockchain, uh, 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 Bitcoin mining? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So I think we're, we already have seen, and I know you guys have had folks on the show talking about the movement towards you know, ESG concerns around mining and, and having miners move more towards sustainable choices. We've been fortunate at Argo. We've been mining in Quebec, renewable power. We're building a big, uh, you know, facility in Texas where it, it's powered primarily over 90% from wind power. So you've seen the movement already towards ESG. And now with this hash rate coming out of China, it's moving away from coal. A lot of those, a lot of those machines were getting power from coal facilities. That will no longer be the case. So just that will jump up the overall sustainability numbers for, for cryptocurrency mining in the short term. And in the long term, given that many of these cryptocurrency miner companies want to join us in the public markets, want to get exposure to large institutions, want to, to share the narrative about Bitcoin, but also want to be you know responsible uh, corporate citizens, many of them are just only looking at renewables now. So I think you know to answer your question five mm -hmm. years from now, we're going to see the majority, probably the vast majority of, of cryptocurrency mining uh, being used, you know, you know, being done with, with renewable power.